What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we're going to be celebrating International Cocktail Day. It is International Cocktail Day and so what we're going to do is we're, I'm just going to show you a fun way to light a beverage. It's a way that I like doing it just mostly because I like using hard light and really that's all we're going to do. We're just going to build it from the ground up. I'm going to show you the process in doing this in case you want to light up a scene like this or something like that if you're looking at how you know we go about doing it so i'm going to be doing more of a hard light approach because it's just something i like to shoot a little bit more if you like using soft light and you know flanking you know glasses on the side with strip boxes and stuff do you by all means i just think this is kind of neat so we're just gonna be hanging out having fun talking about this stuff do you is your uh your restream's working, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. My my chat bot's being weird. Let me see if I can shut it down and restart it because it's showing me from last week, and I want to be able to ch I want to be able to chat That's with okay. everybody. I can shout them out. Don't worry too hard about it. Yeah. Oh, you know it's up now. We got it now. Hey, what's up, Nico? What's hap happening, brother? I think people are excited to make cocktails today. I think you're excited to drink this cocktail. <laughs> no lies there. Yeah. So no we're just just so you kind of understand the premise. It's, once again, International Cocktail Day, so one of mine and Kate's favorite things to do is hang out at the beach and have margaritas. So that's what we're doing today. We have a, Caitlin concocted a fantastic uh, jalapeno mango margarita, is that what it is? That's it. So that's what we're gonna be photographing today. And we're just gonna kinda decorate the set. I'm gonna show you from top to bottom how we build it, uh, talk about all the things that we have. That way, if you're looking for something like this, you can go find the thing. So. Let's just start with, I'm gonna go wide. yeah, that's fine because we're going to start with the scene now. So let's just start with what we're using to photograph the scene. So these are just mat boards from a, an art supply store. So uh, I just got a couple of colors that looked really, really good together. I knew that we were going to be uh, you know, making an orange drink and I thought that orange would pop really, really good with these greens. Plus it has that kind of that island palm tree vibe, which we're gonna bring in with, uh, with a little gobo action and we'll show you how we do that stuff as well. Uh, we won't get too deep into what gobos are. We're gonna talk about that some other day, but we're, we're gonna be goboing up a little bit and we'll talk slightly about it. So once again, these are just mat boards for uh, framing pictures. So, I, and you can get them in lots of different colors. Uh, Blick Art Supplies, where I got these. I'm sure there's, you know, like Sam Flax here in Atlanta and stuff like that. It's gonna have cool things like that as well. So just look for uh, a place that you can get those. The, we initially were going to use the camel uh, colored uh, sweep uh, paper for um, photographing this, but we just didn't like it as much. And we just went with a basic um, floor and wall. What happened? Don't be alarmed, but there's a young lady on your set wearing headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, very dangerous. Don't look at her in the eyes. And it's weird. Um, she's like drinking cocktails. Yeah, she's <laughs> drinking the props. Yeah. Hey, stay away from the props and don't look her in the eyes. Uh, <laughs> but also don't not look at her in the eyes because it can be, be dangerous either way. Um, so yeah, that's your backdrop. So uh, mad boards, bada bing, bada boom. Then we're going to be using two lights for this. Uh, one is gonna be a Profoto A10. I have it set up over there. It's not actually set up. I kind of just, it's not moved around in the, oh, hey, look at that, you're pointing right to it. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, it's not in the place that it's gonna be, and I'll tell you kind of how we're positioning that. The second light to lower the contrast, uh, that way it's not as contrasty, uh, is gonna be this B1X with a large white deep umbrella. Went with the white umbrella just because the nice thing about going with the white umbrella, the transition's a lot smoother. Uh, it's a big, nice umbrella, so it's gonna be really soft. It's gonna fill in those shadows very well. And that's the reason we went there. You could go with the silver and hit it with the diffusion panel if you want to. I just didn't want to overcomplicate things. So white umbrella, no diffusion panel, do a B1X, and that's gonna be our fill light. And we're just gonna build this shot by shot. Or So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put the, oh, I got a little schmuckus on the, Sorry, I had a little schmuckus on my... Uh, Always distracted. It, well, I, it was staring at me. I was like, hey, that's getting close to the glass of my lens. I would prefer it not do that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build each light. Then we're going to add in the gobo and kind of show you the process of building this. I'm not going to use a light meter. Uh, we could. That'd be fine if you wanted to. But it's just Kate and I and you. So we can just kind of fill this out. I know where the lights power need to be because obviously you've seen the card, you've seen what we photographed already, but I'm gonna kind of show you the process of how we we worked through it and, and got what we wanted. So camera wise, everybody always likes to know camera stuff. 
Um, so I will tell you, I am using a Fuji X-T3. I'm using an 80 millimeter macro lens uh, at F8. We're shooting uh, ISO 160, correct? ISO 160 and a shutter speed of one 250th of a second. So those are my camera settings. Got to connect on top of the camera that's triggering my lights. Sweet. Um, so let's start with the main light first. Um, the main light's gonna be an A1, or I always wanna say A1, but an A10 from shooting a little bit from behind so that we're getting some shadow cast this direction. I also wanna shoot it with a harder light too so it hits the glass and, and um, kind of adds a little bit of a shimmer to it. It's cool. The, the only thing that uh, the drink does is it's a little um, diffuse, it's a little cloudy. Yeah, it's muddled. Yeah, it's muddled. So it's a little cloudy, so it's not going to give me as much shine through the glass, but that's fine. It should still hit the rim and, and shine through. Also, the harder light is going to highlight uh, like the salt around the rim uh, of the top of the glass and, the, and the, the spice around the top of the glass. So that hard light should um, give us some nice shadow, some nice texture. Uh, so that's why we're another reason that we're going with the hard light to kind of really just show off everything about it. So uh, let's bring in the cocktail. The, let's bring in the subject matter. So I've got my, my B1X is off, correct? Cool, we're off there. And we then- have a fresh one. Cool, we have a fresh one, sweet. Let's see here. We have, we have a small watermark on the background, so we kind of know where this thing's supposed to be placed at at this point. Uh, I want, the, the placement, I want to shoot down on it a little bit more so we're getting a little bit more of the circular shape of the glass. Uh, also, I want to try to keep the entire glass within the light green. So uh, the dark green kind of just adds a little bit of visual interest to it. So let's uh, let's bring, I have, just so you can kind of see how I have this set up, um, just in order to get the light further away from the drink, I have the A10 set up on a grip arm that I can push over my workbench uh, and get the light a little bit further away. So uh, that way one, it's a harder light source, so when it shoots through the gobo, we'll have uh, more defined um, lines from the shadow that it creates. And then two, the light once again gets harder, so it's a little bit, um, it shows a little bit more detail in the drink as well. So um, let's fire this bad boy up. Cool, it's on. I, I already know that- Do you need to add the model? Uh, just go let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do, you we'll know what, add, you know what, we, we can just add it now. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, okay. Let's just add it. That way they can see it build. Okay. So Caitlin's add the muddle. I'm going to slide this A10 in behind her. It's kind of going to be backwards because we put the accoutrements. Oh, we put the uh, accoutrements on the other side. It's fine. But, it's fine. Right. So. I'm gonna to try to get this A10 right over here. The cool thing is, is you can turn the continuous lamp on. I know y'all probably can't see that as well as I can, because it's pretty subtle with the video lights, but I can kind of see where the light's hitting. One of the things I wanna to try to do is I wanna keep the um, light from hitting this. Um, I had, so just I have a couple of light stands set up, like so this light stand here just has a grip arm to, to hold this mat board taut. So I want to make sure that the light's not hitting this stand and casting any shadows. I want it to be really, really clean from the side. So uh, we may have to make a micro adjustment to that. Uh, power level wise, um, I, I know where I'm supposed to be, but I'm going to turn it down and then we'll adjust it like we're doing this in real life uh, because I guess we are doing it in real life. I'm going to take this air remote in my hand just so I can power up and down from where I'm at. Make sure I'm on the right channel. Sorry, this is super fun. I love doing this kind of stuff. Hopefully you guys are gonna get a lot of stuff out of this. So, uh, do we have, you wanna put the computer screen up so they can see it, they can see it build? So I'm gonna go ahead and take one shot. And you can see what the first shot looks like. We wait for it to load. Okay, so that's the first shot, just the main light. The, um, the shadow is, kind of raking off to the side the way I like. I might actually raise the um, the light up a little bit higher to bring that shadow in a touch tighter. Um, but that being said, I might actually want to, uh, we'll, we'll see what it looks like when we bring in the fill light, but I may actually want to shift this muddle and the uh, lime over to the other side, kind of like in the card shop. But you can see with the hard light, a lot of texture on the rim of the glass, very, very cool stuff, but we're definitely underexposed. 
So let's take it up a stop because that should put us where we need to be. So let's go. So here we go. One stop up. There, it's looking pretty good. I think it's looking pretty good. Now I want to double check and see if I'm at nine because I know that's where I'm supposed to be. Oh, you know, it didn't go up at all. So let's see what's going on here. On. Oh, you know, I bet my batteries are dying on this bad boy. I haven't changed the batteries in this thing in so long. So let's just go here. Cool. I'm just going to power it by this unless I accidentally turn this off myself, which is entirely possible. Uh, my batteries actually might be dying. I wasn't expecting to use this today. It was just kind of convenient. So there we go. That's a shot. Proper exposure. Looks really, really nice. Cool. So the downside now is because this thing is backlit, uh, nice shadow. Let's raise it up just a little bit more. I just want to see if I can get that shadow in it tighter. Although I'm going to have a telezoom lens kind of a uh, modifier in the way. So, but once again, really, really good detail on the rim of the glass. Good detail on like the jalapeno. So you can see all that texture, which is great. Same thing on the lime behind uh, the muddle. Looks really, really good. Lots of texture there. So sweet. We have that there. Perfect. So let's see what happened when we raise it up a little bit. Yeah, so it starts to bring the shadow into the into the frame, so it's not being cut off. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's bring in a fill light. So because what we're what the one of the big problems that we're having now, and once again, I'm probably gonna have to bring the light in closer this way because what's happening is if you see right here, you can see it's starting to get all messy around this line back here, and that's just because there's things like there's stuff creeping into the light. So we're gonna try to, are we cashing up a little bit? Yep. Gotcha. Things get a little spicy in here. What can you say? It's, it's, it's International Cocktail Day. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna bring the light forward just a little bit to try to knock some of this out, and then we're gonna bring in the fill light. So let's do this. Let's just roll this a little bit further forward. We don't have to roll it forward by much, but we just wanna kind of get it to where the flash head doesn't start to creep behind this thing. So that's what we did. So we're right here now. We're B. Let's make sure that I'm not creeping into the shot with my umbrella. And we're not. So B1X, large white umbrella. So it's huge. So this should give us some nice coverage. It should hit the, um, the beverage really, really cleanly. But then it should start to bring up all that contrast. And we'll see a nice transition between the greens. It'll look really, really nice. I promise. So. Right now we're gonna be two stops down from where I'm, I personally wanna be. But once again, this is all a what do you like versus what do you not like. So let's take the first shot with the fill light in there. Does it look bad? It's maybe a little more contrasty than I would like, but it's still not bad. So we're at a power level of 5.5. I'm going to bring it up a little bit just to one, bring this green up some more, but also to bring the shadow up some more. So I don't want it to be quite that contrasty. Let's, let's see what happens if we come up one stop. So here we go. Three, two, one, pop. I know I'm counting down to a drink that's inanimate. So that's looking good. So it's starting to come up nicely. Uh, it's still maybe, I, I still like a little bit more light here on this, this uh, background, but it still looks pretty good. I'm going to bring it up one more stop just to see what happens. Cool. Just make sure that I'm not in the way of that thing. And then so we're going to go to 7.5. So let's see what happens here. Three, two, one. Perfect. I like that. Cool. It's nice. It's not. It's not overly contrasty at all. I can see a nice clean line between the two greens. Honestly, you know what I might like. I know I shot it before at this power, but what if I come down a half a stop, split the difference between what that last shot was and this shot, and I think it actually might look pretty sweet. Yeah, that looks good. So we have a little bit more contrast. I think this looks pretty nice. Uh, the two greens look really great, and we have a, light, a lot of nice fill. So once again, you can see all that texture on the, the rim of the glass. Really, really pretty stuff. Same thing, the texture on the, the piece of mango right here, really, really cool. The, and then the, you know, the, the muddle looks nice. There we go. So you see, everything's nice and sharp. The hard light really starts to show off some of that texture, which is cool. But it's a drink on a green backdrop, and that's fine, but like it doesn't yell tropical. Um, 
And so I want it to yell tropical a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in a gobo. I might actually just have Caitlin hold it in the meantime, in the meantime, just because um, we're, uh, we're building this thing up the way that we want. A couple of rules on gobos really, really quick. We're not gonna get too deep into it. You wanna to try to get the actual light source as far away from, oh, yeah, here, let me get in here. So you wanna actually try to get the light source as far away from the backdrop as you can. Uh, and then you wanna to try to get your gobo, oh, my buddy John Davis trying to FaceTime me. I'm gonna to have to not FaceTime him right now. Um, <laughs> So, but you, you're gonna to wanna to try to get the palm fronds as close to, are we good? Yeah. yeah, we're fine. yeah, yeah. So, and we're gonna to try to get the palm fronds as close to the um, background as we can get it, or as close to the subject as we can get it. That way it's gonna give us the most, uh, the crispest lines we can. If that's what you're going for, if you want something a little more feathered out, you can bring the, uh, the gobo closer to the subject. So that's what we're gonna do here. And one of the ways that really helps with this too, once again, continuous lamp. So turning the continuous lamp on, on the light. So now we can kind of actually see where the shadow falls. Because what we don't want is we don't want the, um, we don't want the glass to go into the shadow because we're gonna lose some of the uh, specularity that you get from the hard light hitting a shiny surface. So this will give us the ability to kind of, you know, place the, the fronds in a way that we like. So you wanna, do you wanna be the frond holder or should I, I just clip it up? Frond it up. You're feeling frony? Frond, front, frondish. Okay. Cool. Sweet. So some palm fronds, and then once again, we're just going to try to keep them as close to the subjects as we can without letting them cut into the frame. So you can get them a little bit closer, Kate. Let's see if I can tuck it around here. Maybe yeah. That. M let's see how that looks. That might start hitting the thing, but it might be fine. So three, two, one. Oh, that looks great. Okay. They can't see it. My bad. Oh, cool. My bad, peeps. There we go. So there it is with the palm frond. So once again, because we were we kept it relatively close to the subject without it, um, without it being in the frame, we were able to keep the detail in the actual fronds themselves, uh, while at the same time trying to keep as much light on the the glass as we can. Uh, we could probably let's do it one more time. I actually really like that though. I know. I kind of like it better than the car shot. Really. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't suck. Doesn't suck. So, but this is just an easy way of building a really simple setup. It's really not that difficult to do this. And it's only two lights. I mean, hey, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just make sure that those shadows aren't hitting the glass. Can you see that? Ah, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, cool. Three, two, uno. It looks nice. So we still have some sparkle in the glass. It's still specular, but it looks really, really nice. And then, yeah, I'm super happy with that actually. That's pretty. It's a very pretty shot. Very cool. So that's just some simple ways that you can add some more visual interest to the shot. Uh, there are some people who are really good at um, staging lots of things within the frame to just add more interest that way. I personally, it's not one of my strengths. Uh, could I work on it? 100%. I could work on lots of things. Uh, I could work on not eating as many cookies. But um, it's not necessarily my strength. So I was just able to take something relatively simple, the drink, the muddle, and the lime. Uh, Caitlin did a fantastic job decorating the rim of the glass. You're She's welcome. Uh, if anybody wants the recipe, hit me up. Yeah, Kate, Kate will hook you up with the recipe. So just hit her up at the Kate Fane. I'm at the Chris Fane, so it's pretty easy to find us. Uh, but Kate's good with the recipe. Um, but yeah, so you can just do something simple like adding a gobo for some visual interest, a little bit of shadow that kind of tell, helps tell the story. So we have, you know, like the back, you know, back at the screen, we have the palm front. Oh, you can see it in the corner, sweet. Yeah. So you can see the palm front, which is uh, kind of cool, the little shadow of that that kind of has that tropical vibe to it. It's clearly a very tropical drink uh, with the colors and the, and the decorations of the rim and stuff like that. And then just to kind of help it feel a little more cohesive, we have uh, some matte board that we taped in, into a, a V shape. And it's really that simple. It's not anything that's overly complicated. You could take really, really cool photos just by messing around with some stuff. And once again, two light sources. And I didn't even try, once again, I didn't even put a diffusion panel or anything over the front of the umbrella. Uh, and the 
A10 is bare bulb. The one thing that I did do to the A10 is I zoomed the head all the way in, so it's not really, really wide. It's pretty pointed. Let me, you know, I don't. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the wide shot real fast. I, you know, I pointed it in. Oh, you know what? I lied. I was actually zoomed all the way out. I thought I zoomed all the way in. Maybe I zoomed all the way out when I. Um, I'm gonna take one more shot with it zoomed all the way in, just to see what it looks like. You wanna, you wanna front? Yeah, and you wanna frond me up. We can be best fronds. Love it. So cool. Getting frondy. The one thing that's gonna that should change, and actually it might have been better that I was super wide with that shot, because one of the things that you're probably gonna see is uh, the fronds are probably gonna fall off even more uh, because the light's more pointed. So it's gotta it's gotta hit a, a specific spot. So let's see what happens. Three, two, uno. Not bad. It's not drastically different. I would say that the um, the oh, I'm a dummy. I moved my I, I moved my fill light out of the way. Here, let me bring this back. I was trying to figure out why it got so got so contrasty. Pardon me, party people. Here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, looks nice. There we go. Less contrast. There it is. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Way less contrast. It looks nice. So the one thing, let's see if we can tell the difference between the pointed A10 and the non-pointed A10, because now I'm curious as to if it mattered that much. Let's see. So it should be this one and this one. So light-wise, it doesn't look terribly different. I will say this with the pointed A10, there's definitely more of uh, what looks like to be a hot spot right here. Uh, and that's to be expected just because now you've taken something with a wide beam angle and you've focused it a little bit more. So, but one of the things I was gonna be afraid that was gonna happen is the palm fronds were probably gonna fall off a little bit more, but it looks like we had the light pointed in, in the right direction to give us some good coverage. So really, really cool stuff. So it didn't make a terribly huge difference in, uh, in whether I was super wide or pointed just because of the head position of the A10. So let me see if y'all have any questions. Once again, this is a really easy live. It's, it's just supposed to give you ideas to maybe take some more photos for yourself uh, and then also to celebrate having a cocktail because we're coming up on the weekend. It should be a good time. And it's getting warmer. Mm -hmm. Although you couldn't tell the last couple days in the ATL. So let's see, let me get out of here. Let me get over here to my chats and see what we got. Let's see. What's your favorite thing to photograph? Um, my favorite thing to photograph are people. Um, I got into photography uh, first and foremost by uh, photographing Kate. So she was, uh, I'm one of those people who thinks I can do everything, uh, maybe to a fault sometimes. But when we, when I was, when we were a lot younger, um, Kate was an opera singer for a long, long time. And she, one day she goes, I need some new headshots. And I was like, my friend had a nice camera. And by nice, I mean like my friend had a Canon Rebel, uh, which was way better than anything I'd ever played with. But I was like, I could totally take your headshots. Uh, and it started off like that. And then now the sickness has gotten worse, uh, but she's still my favorite person to photograph because the reason I started photographing, but I love taking pictures of people. So that's what I like. Um, a little saturation is needed. Let's saturate it. Let's saturate it up. Um, I was messing around in capture a little bit earlier, but maybe, yep, yeah, all my stuff's there, but here, let's saturate it up a little bit more. Let's get wily with it. So what I would probably do, let's go, let's go in and focus on some colors. Let's go in here to a little green, since we definitely have green in there. Let's, let's see what happens when we pump the green up. It's maybe a little bit more than I'd like. And then we kind of play with I like the, warmth of that, though. the color cast. There we go, right? And then we have some orange in there. So we go in there and we could pump that up some more if you really wanted to kind of play up the orange. The only thing that, that gets with me too much with the orange is that muddle gets a little too like in your face. But you can go in there, you can play with the lightness if you wanted to, you could bring that up. So you could do a lot of fun stuff with it. But yeah, you could definitely pump up the saturation. It's fun stuff. Play with it however you like. Um, Really, really, really cool stuff. Let's get right here to Restream and say hi. Uh, what's up? Oh, my man Joel's in here. What's up, dude? Um, hey, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? Hopefully, we're not buffering it. No, we're good. No, we, good. we. I think we were able to thwart any buffering. So let's see. I'm just making sure I haven't missed out on any questions. 
Um, hey, everybody. Carl, my man, chilling. Everybody, what's up? Cool. So this is super fun. So once again, nothing overly complicated. Let's just, right before we close this thing out for the day, let's talk about what we did camera settings wise, uh, and that way you can see uh, the setup. We'll also have a whole um, face uh, pro photo page on our website. Uh, it'll probably go out if you're uh, a member of our newsletter, uh, sign up for it because we'll send out uh, a newsletter and we'll have some BTS shots so you can kind of see what things look like from different perspectives. Uh, and that way you can see BTS shots. It'll have a lighting diagram. So you could uh, use that same lighting diagram to make a shot similar if you would like to, uh, but it'll be awesome. So let's just talk about what everything is again. Once again, just some matte board from a, uh, from a craft store, a uh, picture frame matte board in a color that I knew that I wanted. So like an olive green and kind of like a sagey green. Then we have um, an A10 over here. That's our main light shining from back in the corner giving us some specularity. I see you sipping on that drink. Um, giving us some specularity on the glass, but also highlighting the, the salt and the spices on the rim, and as well as the texture on the charred jalapeno. On top of that, we have a large white umbrella here through a B1X. That's giving us our fill light. That's bringing that contrast up. The reason I went with a white umbrella is I didn't want to put a diffusion panel on it today. I just wanted to try to keep things as uncomplicated as possible. So it's just a white umbrella, really smooth light, really large modifier. So it covers a lot, brings that contrast up, helps us see the green in the, uh, in the background and on the, the bottom itself. So just really, really beautiful stuff. And then honestly, we went to another craft store um, and got the palm frond. So it's just one of those things where you, when you're building like a fake bouquet, it's a fake palm frond. So and we just shot that uh, the the background light. We shot it through the palm frond, trying to keep it as close to the subject as we could. So, really easy stuff, super fun. Uh, I'm gonna see if y'all have any more questions before I sign out of here. But yeah, let's see. Um, hey Chris, next time do a Father's Day shoot to show how to photograph a dad and his kiddo. Totally. Uh, when is Father's Day? Maybe we'll save it for like we'll save it for the week of Father's Day. How about that? Because I'm sure my daughter. My son probably wouldn't care as much, but my daughter's a ham. A wild man, yeah, I can bring my I can bring the dude in here. He's a wild man. My daughter's a ham, and she would probably love it. So yeah, we'll and maybe we'll have Kate photograph us. So that'd be super fun. Let's do it. That's actually a great idea, Joel. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's up with the cocktails? All right, cool. Um, thank you all so much for coming and kicking it with us. Super fun, really, really easy live. Hopefully, you. I would love to see um, show you know, show, one, show us your cocktails because it's International Cocktail Day. If that's your bag, if it's not your thing, you know, have a glass of milk for your man right here as long as you're not lactose intolerant because uh, cookies and milk's my other jam. Um, so let's uh, sh share, us, share with us your cocktails. Also share with us your still life shots. If you wanna do something for International Cocktail Day or if this live has inspired you to do anything in particular, let me see those photos, I wanna see them. Uh, tag us, Pro Photo USA, tag me at the Chris Fane, tag Kate at the Kate Fane. Definitely tag at the Kate Fane if, um, if you wanna know how to make this. If you wanna know how to make it or if you make it, you know, or if you make it and you're just showing off your, your uh, uh, your super awesome margarita action. So thank you all so much for coming and kicking it with us. Cheers, everybody. Kuwait in the house. Blessings to everyone. Have an awesome, oh, oh yep, 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 let's do this. Cheers, governor. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll see you next week. Peace out.